Good eat. Good morning. Let's go and stand to our feet. Look at the person beside you. Say, it is so good to see you. Oh, come on. You do better than that. Look at them and say, it is so good to see you. Look at the other person beside you. Say, it's great to see you this morning. Come on. Who's ready to praise the Lord this morning? Let's just lift our hands towards heaven. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Come on. Put your hands together. Oh, we love you, Lord. rise and fall Kingdoms more strong now shaken We trust forever in your name The name of Jesus Ooh, We trust the name of Jesus You are the only King forever Almighty God higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God lifts you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Oh, we love you, Lord. I match in all your wisdom, in love, in justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We break our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. Jesus, you are the only King forever. Almighty God, you lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are the darkness. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, you lift you higher. You are the only King forever. We lift our banner high, we lift the name of Jesus, from age to age you reign, your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high, we lift the name of Jesus, from age to age you reign, your kingdom Come on, every hand lifted, let's say that. We lift our banner high, we lift the name of Jesus, from age to age to reign, your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high, we lift the name of Jesus, from age to age to reign, your kingdom has no end. You are the only king. Forever, Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Hallelujah. We serve a victorious God. Not only is He victorious, but He is faithful and He is good and He is kind. 
and he's always with us so if we can lift our hands toward heaven this morning let's take a moment let's enter into worship let's worship a god who's been with us through it all and who will never leave us through it all we thank you jesus you're so good god we worship you moment right now is between you and God. Just put your attention and your focus on him this morning. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be, this reckoning I know I will never be alone come on and sing there is another in the fire standing next to me there was another in the waters holding back the sea should I ever need reminded of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Come on, how many people do you love this morning? Oh, we love the Lord. Oh, my dead leopard dead. Oh, my dead leopard dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And when I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world Cause I know I know I will never be alone There is another in There is another in the waters Holding back the sea And should I ever need reminded The power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody And now that power lives in me Come on, lift it up There is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire Joy compared to battle. 
Cause I know that's way Come on, sing, I can see the love I can see the love In the darkness As the darkness bounds to him I can hear the roar In the heavens As the space between with him I can feel the ground Shake beneath us As the prison walls can fail Nothing stands between us Nothing stands between Don't be another in the fire Standing next to me Don't be another in the waters Holding back the sea Should I ever need love How could you bear to me? Joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be There is another in the fire
Hi, how you doing Relevant Church? We're so glad that you're here today. And as you're making your way back to your seat and greeting those last few people, I wanted to take a minute and ask you a question. Are you new here? If so, Relevant Church is a great place to find your place, reveal your purpose, and unlock your potential. And one of the best ways that we can help you do that is through connecting with you. So we have a special assignment for you, but don't worry, it's as easy as one, two, three. Step number one, I would love for you to find this connect card. It's in the seat back pocket in front of you. It says welcome home on the front and connect card on the back. If you'll take a few moments and do step number two, which is to fill it out completely and neatly, just so we can connect with you later on in the week. We promise your information is 100% safe and secure. Last but not least, step number three is by far the best step of them all because you wanna take this completed connect card back to the welcome center where it says welcome home and there you'll receive a free gift. Our connection crew is waiting to meet you, greet you, and learn more about who you are and what you do. It's been a pleasure being with you here today. I hope that you have a great rest of your experience and as always, welcome home. Good morning, Relevant Church. How's everybody doing today? Hello. Hello. Everybody doing good today? Awesome. I'm doing so good today. I hope you are too. And like the video said, if this is your first time with us, we want to say welcome. Make sure you stop by the Welcome Center and get your free gift. You don't want to miss out on that. It's awesome. And we're so glad that you're here. Also, if you're viewing online this morning, we want to say welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we know that God is going to do great things for you exactly where you are today. Awesome. Well, how many of you were here this past week for our trunk or treat? Guys, we had almost a thousand people on this campus on Thursday night. It was, it was by far the biggest event that we have had in this church for a long time. It was so amazing. So thank you all that brought your creativity and your time and your talent for the trunks and all the volunteers that showed up and showed out to bless this community. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, and you can see all the photos and the highlights and the recaps on our Facebook page. So you can always visit there. And also, you know, guys, can, how many of you can believe it's November already? Like, am I the only one that, like, what happened to the last quarter of the year, right? So as you guys know, we always plan ahead. Our next community event that we have coming up is our Port Orange Parade. And that is on Sunday, December 1st. So it's only like four weeks away. Oh my goodness, four weeks away. That's now guys, crazy. this year our theme, the theme that Port Orange chose is uh, Santa's Workshop. So this year, our creative team has come up with a fantastic idea. Last year we won first. The year before we won second, the year before first. So we're going for first place again this year, okay? Yes. So there's a pattern. We've had more first than we have seconds. But this year we're bringing it home because we are going to do Santa's Workshop Lego Division. So you might ask, how can we be a part of this? So the whole thing is going to be Lego everything, which is where your creativity comes into play once again because everybody that walks with the float are going to get an opportunity to make their own costumes and to help us with the float. So if you will write in your calendar Sunday, November the 10th at 5 p.m., we will be having a fun project night. So all we need guys, we need gals. It's not just a girl event. It's not just craft. We have like actual woodworking stuff and building a conveyor belt and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, we dream, we, we have big dreams this year, and we hope that you will take an opportunity to join us on uh, November the 10th at 5 p.m. here at the church, um, and we will be doing our craft night and project night, so come help us paint, you know, wear some fun clothes that you can work in. Does that sound good? I'm super excited about that. Crafting is one of my specialties, so I will for sure be there, and I hope you join us. Also, that has been your weekly announcements. My name is Kelsey. I'm Roxanne. And we're getting re going to get ready to take up our tithe and offering, but as always, welcome, welcome home. Well, praise the Lord. Well, awesome. Well, we're going to transition right into our tithes and our offerings. And, you know, this is, again, one of those times in the service where we can really honor the Lord with our finances. That has been something really um, that God has put on my own heart 
is in all that we do, we honor the Lord. And in our finances, that we do the same. So if you'll turn in your Bibles with me to Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to read it in the King James first, and then I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation, which is one of my newfound favorite translations, uh, which is, it's, it's just really awesome. But let me read it to you in the King James in uh, Proverbs 3, verses 9 through 10. And this is one, um, guys, if you need a scripture for your, for your tithes and your offerings and you want to put it in your wallet or put it on your mirror or, you know, put it in your purse or however you put it on your screensaver, this is one of those verses that will bring you freedom because it says here, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. This next part is where you want to underline. So that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Okay, so obviously most of us don't have barns, but we can look at the scripture and say (laughs) that, hey, my life will overflow with good things, and I will have new things, I will have prosperity in this season. And then it says um, on down in verse 10, glorify God with all your wealth, not just your money, but any wealth you have, right? Honor God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. And then in the Passion Translation, um, oh, that was the Passion Translation. I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) So the Passion Translation says, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. Then every, this is the part where I want to run around the room, because then every dimension of your life, who needs every dimension of your life to overflow with blessings and from an uncontainable source of inner joy. Who in this room needs to have your life filled to overflowing with blessings that are uncontainable? Amen. Well, part of that way is we bring our first fruits into this house and we honor the Lord with our wealth so that God can in turn bring increase to our life, right? Because God gives us the power. God wants us to have money, but he doesn't want us to trust in its riches, that then he wants us to be confident in him and honoring him in our wealth because what happens when you honor God in your giving, it breaks the power of the love of money off of your life. So let's get ready to give unto the Lord. You can do that very easily by taking that envelope or you can visit us online at relevantfl.org slash giving or text us at 386-968-1103. But you guys can go ahead and come forward as we get ready to pray for our offering because we know that God is going to supply for you. We know that God is going to help you to operate and to have overflow in every dimension of your life. So let's pray that this morning. God, I thank you for each and every person that is in this house. I thank you for each and every person that is sowing seed this morning in the offering. And God, we thank you, Lord, that as they bring their first fruits, as they honor you with their very best, with every increase that comes in. God, we thank you, Father God, that in every dimension of their life, that it overflows with blessings, that it's uncontainable. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said... Amen and amen. You guys may receive the offering. All right. So good morning again. Listen, I'm so excited about this new series. How many of you have seen some of it or follow us on social media? Do most of you follow us on social media? So you might have seen the little things um, for our new series that we're beginning this month called Into Reality, the Substance of Faith. How many of you know, every, uh, faith is one of my favorite subjects to, to, to learn about, to get in, excited about, and it's, it's one of those things that Pastor Chris has such a gift and such an anointing to teach on this topic. And I hope that you guys have been praying for Pastor Chris and Pastor Liz. They have been doing some powerful work over uh, in Belgium. They've been preaching and teaching and and just helping with the Bible college that's over there. And just doing mighty things, planting seeds. We've seen growth. We've seen change. We've seen healings and salvations and breakthroughs in the lives of the people in Belgium. So continue to pray for them as they begin traveling. They'll be home tomorrow. But I am so very excited. Excited and so very honored to be able to allow you guys to hear this word from Pastor Chris on faith. So you guys can go ahead and play that video. Praise the Lord. Hey guys, it's Pastor Chris. 
And I'm so excited to be able to come to you with this brand new series. Amen. This series, in reality, is going to be about faith. It's about the realities of faith. You know, we just had a little seminar, um, a three-day seminar about faith. And it really um, grabbed my attention how important faith is. And I am, I'm really excited to be able to come to you today and teach this line upon line, slowly, amen. Because how many of you know, sometimes when, when I'm here, uh, as you can see, I'll, I'm not here physically, but I'm here spiritually. This is my spiritual being. Um, it slows me down to allow me to teach to you in more of a Bible setting, which sometimes I really enjoy. And in topics like this, I am astounded that I get to do this for you today. I really am. Because it really gets me sharp in conveying information to you that can change your life forever. We are going to be talking about faith over the next couple of weeks, and I believe it is going to change your life forever. I believe that faith is one of the most important subjects in the Bible, and we have to understand it if we're going to see God move in our life. We have to understand. We're going to be teaching you so many concepts of faith that the realities of it are going to become so real to you that something is going to change in your spiritual life forever. I believe we're going to connect some of the dots of the whys and, and the whats and the hows and the whens. I really believe that this series is not only going to be life-changing, but it's going to allow you to be not just a doer of the faith exploits, but you're going to be a teacher of faith exploits for others. So many people I see are struggling in this area, and I want you to know that we are gonna, we're going to really look through the Word of God, and we are going to eradicate some misconceptions of faith, and we are going to pour some for, firm foundation principles that are going to transform your life forever. And they are going to be powerful because they're going to be the elements and the components of faith to work on another level for you. So I'm excited. I hope you are. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get ready to get in this work. Go with me to Hebrews 11, 1. That's where we're going to start. Some people like to call it the Hall of Faith. I want to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you first in the, in the King James, and then I'm going to read it for you guys in the Amplified Bible. I want to expound it as much as possible. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to take my time and teach this over to you. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God now get this, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. That means it is a substance, a substance that is unseen that creates the reality you and I live in. Let's look at Hebrews 11.1. I'll give them a minute to put that up there in the Amplified Bible. Now, a lot of you guys have been around me for a while, so you know where I'm going to lean towards. But I've got brand new information, and I'm excited about it, man. I've got some stuff in the Word of God is going to seal the position of faith in your heart today. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your tomorrow. I promise you it will. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Remember we talked about it? Title deed means you have the paperwork. Amen. Um, if you've got a car, you got a title for your car. That Somebody else can be driving your car. Somebody else could, your car could be anywhere. But if you've got the paperwork, it's your car all the while. Even if you don't see it, you still got it. Because if I got the paperwork, I got the promise. Come on, somebody. Look at this. It is the title deed of things which we hope for being the proof of things we do not see. And the conviction of their reality. Oof, I love that. It's the conviction of the reality that it's mine. Even though you don't see it. Now, let me explain something to you. Your senses cannot come into play when you are operating in faith. See, touch, smell, taste, all of it, hear. All those sensual senses are very much so null and void when it comes to faith. Because faith can see the impossible. Faith can see the invisible. Faith could see what does not look like it is there right now. That's important. Because a lot of times we walk by sight and not by faith. We're going to talk about it. We've got plenty of time. We're going to get this over to you. Now, I want you to see something. Now, watch this. It is a conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Man, just meditate in that for a minute, guys. This is so powerful. So faith perceiving as a real fact 
what is not revealed to the senses. So my senses are saying, I don't see it. I don't taste, I don't touch it. I don't understand it. Faith can see that even when the senses don't. So that's one major key because something you and I have to ask ourselves is, am I looking in the reality of the seen realm to determine whether my faith is working? My faith doesn't work in the seen realm. It manifests in the seen realm. My faith works in the unseen realm. But when it shows up in the seen realm, my faith has finished the job. Do you, do you now get that? I'm not looking by what I see to tell me whether faith is working. Faith works in the unseen, but when faith shows up, it's accomplished its job. Very important to walk by faith and not by sight. So God is telling us that sight is the opposite of faith. Pretty much. He said, the just shall live by faith. Walk, what did he say? He said, walk by faith, not by sight. So there's the opposite. So you're either walking by sight or you're walking by faith. Okay, look at this. For by faith, trust and holy, oh my God, look at it, fervor, born of faith. Okay, trust and holy what? Fervor, born of faith. The men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. By faith, we understand the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purposes by the word of God so that what we see was not made out of things which do appear. Praise the Lord, all right? Now, I want you to write this down. So write this down. Pull these points together. I'm going to give you a lot of information today. Make sure you got a pen. Make sure you got some paper. Make sure you're ready to go. Write some notes. Get your phone. Get a clean note sheet. Got a lot of stuff for you today. Amen. Number one, the New Testament English word for faith is used, translated in the Greek. It, it is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. The New Strong's Expanded Dictionary of Bible Words says this. It is used of belief with a prominent idea of trust or confidence. It is used of belief with prominent idea of trust or confidence. Whether in God or in Christ, springing from faith in the same. Faith basically means trust, confidence, assurance, and belief. I'm going to read that again, give you some time. Amen. The Greek word, the translation word is faith means trust. So these are the easy ones for you. Write these down. They'll come back to your remembrance. Um, God will call them back to your memory. Faith is trust. These are easy, right? Faith is confidence. Faith is assurance. Faith is belief. Okay? Very important. So if I'm trusting God, like you might be going through life sometimes, and you go, well, what's going on? I got pressure. Well, I'm trusting God. Well, that's your faith. Does that make sense? Like I'm trusting God. I know everything doesn't look great, but I'm trusting God he's going to work it out. That's, that's the place. So trust is it a component of faith. Confidence is a component of faith. Assurance is a component of faith. And belief is faith. You see it? Very important. The Bible also defines this. Now, I'm going to read Hebrews 11.1 1 with the Greek context to understanding this. It is written in the language of understanding. I want to read it to you. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, watch the Greek play in this. Faith is the substance or assurance. Remember we got that? Trust, confidence, assurance, belief. Faith is the substance or the assurance of things we hope for but have not yet received. Faith, now here we go, faith, confidence, belief, trust, assurance, is also our evidence of that which is not seen, the invisible spiritual things. Okay, now just sit on that. You're probably going to have to go back and get the podcast. That's why we have the Relevant Church podcast. A lot of information, a lot of revelation, but now you have to have, you have to mature in this thing, so you need to sit in it and meditate in it, okay? So here it is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, 
Faint is the substance or the assurance of things we hope for but have not yet received. Faith, confidence, belief, trust, assurance is also evidence of what? What? Of the things which are not seen, it is the invisible spiritual thing. Very important. So we're working in a material that that faith really brings explanation to me and you in the unseen realm. It explains itself there. In the natural realm, you're not going to see faith until it manifests. So you can't walk by that. We're going to explain it. Now, here's one of the major keys. Write this down. You want to call it point two. I got a lot of info for you today. So write it down, A, B, C, D. I got the whole, I got the whole, I got the whole vocabulary. I got A, B, Z, and I got it all here. I got, I got it all. So just get ready, okay? Remember this. It has to be faith first. Now faith, okay? Now we talk a lot about that. Now faith, Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things. Like if it isn't now, we like to say in the church world, then it's not faith. But here's what I want you to do. It's faith first before anything's going to function proper in your life. I'm going to explain this. Faith comes before prayer is answered. Faith comes before an individual has received anything you requested. If we received it and we asked for it in faith, guess what? Faith is going to work. It's faith before prayer. It's faith before believe you receive. It's faith before you even come into the presence of God. It's got to be faith first. Faith is the only thing, Hebrews eleven six that pleases God. That's one of the most important things you and I can understand. It's our obligation to find faith. God said faith pleases him. Now, this is a kind of a, of a, of a, a it's Hebrews eleven six. You can put it up there. Let him see it. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to him must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, now I want you to look at this. Very important. Powerful point here we've never really brought out. This series, this next, I'm going to carry this series maybe to the end of the year. Probably I am. Um, I am excited about this series because I believe this series is going to change your life. There's points in here I've never really gotten over to you guys, but I want you to see this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. Right there, you start seeing something. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe. Come on, relevant. Faith and belief. Faith and belief. Interchangeable. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to what? Please him, for he that cometh to God must believe. That he's what? Come on now. You've got to put faith and belief. They're working together. You see it, you see, you even see it in Hebrews eleven six. Faith and belief working interchangeably. Substance means essence or reality that we talked about. Faith is the substance or the essence of the reality. Faith treats things hoped for. Just like their reality, evidence means proof or conviction. So that's what I'm saying, right? So evidence is proof or conviction. So faith treats things hope for. Now, first and foremost, i got to have faith to please God. So if I come to prayer without faith, I don't think your prayer life is going to be too hot. If I come to God without faith, I don't think, I don't think it's going to work. If I bring worship, you know, can you imagine worshiping God and like, I think you're the God that can do everything, maybe. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got your hands lifted and say, sure, I think God, you know, you know, we sing all these songs. They're great. You know what I mean? You can do maybe the impossible. you got to have faith in your worship. you got to have faith for your marriage. you got to have faith for your kid. you got to have, how, how are you going to go in there and pray for people? With how I prayed the prayer of faith for you guys. How would you like this? Pastor Chris, I'm going in for, you know, this really big kind of like testing and surgery or something or, you know, I feel like this. And I come to you and go, oh, great. You know, let's let's pray. Oh, God, you know, you might want to do this, but I don't know if you do. So, hey, it's a 50-50 shot. Let's just go for it. And we'll just kind of work out the mess as it. No, you got to have faith before you pray for somebody. You got to you got to believe that what God said, he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But we got to have faith before anything. So faith is a major component before you're going to get your spiritual life to go. You're here today by faith. What do you mean? 
Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves with the brethren. That's why you came to church today. You came to learn. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you're putting your faith to work. I'm telling you, listen to me. It is powerful. Now write this down. This is my definition of faith in this realm. In the Greek, with the Greek understanding of what pistis means, the Greek, just let's say we're overlaying it. It is a firm persuasion. It is a conviction based upon hearing. Write that down. Faith is a firm persuasion. It is a conviction based upon hearing. These words are all going to, all week long, these words are going to pop up and trust is going to come in. Assurance is going to come in. A persuasion is, I'm persuaded that God can do it. Okay? This is a big one. One modern translation reads like this. Faith is giving substance to things hoped for. We need to realize that it is our faith that gives substance to the things we hope for. If we're going to wait until we get something before we'll believe we have it, we're too late and it won't work. It's your faith that gives substance to the things that you desire. Okay? If you wait till you see it, you're never going to see it. Faith first. Remember that. Faith first. First, I got to believe before I receive. I got to believe before I see. I got to believe before he does. I got to believe in it. I got to get my belief first. Okay? Hope says it's in the future. Faith says it's now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Faith is now. Hope is future. If what you're believing is going to happen over there, you haven't gotten to faith yet. You got to believe you receive right now. We're going to talk about it. We need that. We've, all, we've used these scriptures. Don't forget this, right? So the Bible makes a very clear path of understanding. I want to kind of go through these so you get these. It says in Hebrews 11.6. Now, I'm going to give you these pretty rapidly because I've given you these before. And I've got a lot of brand new context I want to get over to you. Um, just stuff that could really help you. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them who what? Diligently seek him. Faith pleases God. Now this is the component. If my faith, if my faith pleases God, then I need to know what faith is because how am I going to know whether I'm pleasing God or not? Think about that. If my faith, if my faith pleases God, how do I know whether I'm in it or not? Very important question. How come we can't easily identify it? How come we can't easily explain it? How come we can't just simplify it? We're going to simplify it. You know where I'm going. Faith is going to wind up in your beliefs. But I'm going to show you so much scriptural proof of this today that I don't have time to. Because sometimes we're just, we're, we're just, I get you once a week, most of you. You know what I mean? That's why this is so important that I can get this stuff to you. And you can go back and watch this over and over and over. If you're hungry for God, this stuff will help. Okay, look at it. We're to live by faith. Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. There he told you right there. He said, pleasure comes from faith. He says, if you want, don't live by faith. I draw back my pleasure. Two times you see pleasing faith. Do you see that? But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now I'm giving you more. I told you this was going to be more. It's not the same faith stuff I've been teaching you guys. We're going to another level. Look at Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have what? No pleasure with him. There's faith and pleasure again. My faith pleases God. My faith brings pleasure to God. God wants to look down to heaven and see me believing. Amen? Look at, we live by faith. How about this one? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's a powerful one. We're to walk by not what we see. So many times... We look to see if our faith is working based upon what we see. You cannot, you cannot navigate your life looking at what you see to tell me whether your faith is working. You cannot do it. You cannot, you're not allowed to. It does, stop looking in a realm of seeing to see if the unseen stuff is working. So important. How about this one? Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, take the shield of faith. But when you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You protect yourself with faith. You protect yourself with faith. Yes, you do. Above all, taking the shield of faith and quench the fiery darts. Question, how do you protect yourself 
If you don't have faith, you don't. You allow those fiery darts to damage your mind. We are living in a generation that is damaged by the enemy. Listen to me. I'm, I'm being very sensitive right now. We are living in a world that is damaged by an enemy, but they don't know how to withstand him. And the damage will continue until you learn how to walk by faith. Listen to me, guys. I'm going to say this. There is not enough. There is not enough help out there. There is not enough medication out there. I'm not, take your stuff, do your thing, go to therapy. Please understand me. Your, your weapon is your shield. I'm telling you, listen to me. My, this devil doesn't stop shooting fiery darts, but your shield of your beliefs will quench his fiery voice. I promise you that. You have to teach this to people. They got to learn. They got to learn how to protect themselves. You know, one time I was thinking about it, I was like, I was thinking, if you're getting hit by an enemy and you don't know where it is, it's impossible to defend yourself. I want you to see this. So we're going to look two places and then a bunch of other places. I want you to see this. What, what is faith? It is, a, it, is, it, is, it is a persuasion. It is conviction based upon hearing. But I want you to look at some stuff. First and foremost, I want you to flip with me to Matthew 9, 27. I am going to go on a run right here that is going to take you to the place of understanding. Now, I'm going to give it to you quick because I want to just, I really, you know, it's funny. I usually set you up and wait, what is faith? And then, you know, I let you find out. Write this down. Faith is simply what I believe. Write it down. You guys know this. You've been with me. But listen, this is new. It's all new after this one. Faith is simply what you believe. Now I'm going to prove to you scripture after scripture after scripture. By the time you walk out of that door today, you are going to know faith is simply what you believe. Write that down. Very, very important. I'm going to show it to you in the word of God. When you see it, you can. So faith is simply what I believe, and my beliefs are my faith. Don't forget that. Watch this right here. Matthew 9, 27. We've been here before, but we are going to find a whole bunch more that you've never seen like this. I promise you that. Matthew 9, 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said, Yes, Lord. He said, Jesus said, Jesus said, it's red letter. Jesus said, Do you believe I can do this? They said, Yes, we believe. And then Jesus, touching their eyes, said, according to your faith, be it unto you. So Jesus said, do you believe me? They said, we believe. He said, good, according to, why didn't he say according to your belief? Why didn't he say, well, according to the way you believe, that's why I'm giving it to you. He called belief and faith the same thing. So my beliefs are my faith. And what you believe is formed by what you hear. Now, we've got to make sure you're hearing the right stuff. But I can help you there. But let's just get this point over today. Faith is simply what I believe. We're going to go to John chapter 20. I'm going to make some time through these because a lot of you know these, but I got new ones I want to get over to you. John chapter 20, verse 24. When you get there, everybody say amen. Hallelujah. If I'm going too fast, praise be to God. That's why it's good I'm on this thing. Imagine if I was here running around in person. I'd get so excited. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to see this. John 20, 24. You all know it's about Thomas, and you've been with me here. The spirit of faith has a connection. I want you to see this thing. Jesus gives the opportunity to believe or to understand something that maybe they've never understood before. And it comes here today that we could see this thing. We're going to understand faith is simply what I believe. Thomas 20, 20 I'm sorry, John 20, 24, we see the story of Thomas. And it says this. And you know, after eight days, Jesus showed up. He walked through the wall. He told the disciples, hey, it's me. I've resurrected. Thomas wasn't there. In verse 24, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Now the disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the bread. I got to see something to believe something. That is not faith. I got to see it to believe it. If I could take my finger, put it in a nail, point to the hands, thrust my hand, then I'll believe it. And otherwise, I don't, if I don't see it, I'm not believing it. That's, that's why we call him a doubter. Because doubt has to have senses. Sensual belief. I don't see, I don't believe, I can't touch it, I can't feel it, I don't believe it. But I got news for you, you're not going to be one of those kind of believers. You're going to be a believer that believes, amen? Glory be to God. You want to know why? Because you guys understand this thing greater than maybe he did. And these after eight days, and after eight days, I love this, again, the disciples were there, Thomas being there, Jesus came right through the wall again and said, Thomas, reach hither thy finger, behold thine hand, reach hither thine hand, and thrust it in my side. Be not 
faithless but believing. There it is right there. He said, don't be faithless but be believing. If I do not, look what he said in verse um, 24. He said this in verse 25, I'm sorry. He said, I will not believe. He said, except I shall see. He said, I will not believe. What's the first thing Jesus says in 27? Don't be faithless but be believing. Interchangeable again. You want to see it? 2 Corinthians 4, 13. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. We having the same spirit of faith. I want you to get this now. This is, this is strong. The spirit of faith in the life of the believer is the spirit of faith is your believing spirit. What is the spirit of faith? This is powerful. We having the same spirit of faith. Jesus makes it clear. He said the spirit of faith. Well, what's the spirit of faith? According as it is written, I have believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So the spirit of faith believes and speaks. See that? This, what is we having the same spirit of faith according to his written? I believe and therefore I speak. What it, he's using faith and belief interchangeably again. The spirit of faith is the spirit of belief. The spirit of faith is the spirit of belief. I'm telling you, and your beliefs need to be spirited by the word of God. Let me explain that. There's inspiration for you to see in the word of God that gives you the confidence that God can do what he does. That is called the, see, the written word of God is the logos, written word of God. The rhema is the spoken word of God. When you get the spirit of the word of God in you, when you speak, you release creative force. We're going to talk about that, but I want you to see this. Jesus, Jesus has given me and you so many great opportunities to understand this thing. How about this one? I got a bunch of them, and I'll show them to you. How about the Roman centurion, Matthew chapter 8? I want you to see this one. Go there with me. I'm building it. Faith, everybody say it. Faith is simply what I believe. We're going to look at the Roman centurion, amen? 8 and 10. Matthew 8 and 10, amen? Matthew 8 and 10. And when Jesus, praise be to God, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, Verily, I have not found so great a faith. I want to read 10, 11, and 12, and 13. I want you to say this. And this is the Roman centurion. You all know this story. He came, and if you don't know, he came to see if Jesus would heal his servant. Look what he says. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. Underline it. So great faith, not in Israel. And I say unto you, there shall many come from the east and the west and sit down from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out to utter darkness and shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Watch this. Here we go. And Jesus said in the centurion, go thy way. Come on, man. Come on. Look what he said. Come on. Go thy way as thou hast believed. Be it so done unto you. He said, great faith came from your belief, buddy. A man of great faith. The Roman centurion. Everybody talks about the Roman centurion having great faith. Jesus said, you believed and he gave you great faith. Why did he have great faith? Because he didn't have to see Jesus walk through the door of his house to do it. He said, if you say it, that spirit of faith knows. If you say it. It's as good as you walking in the house and doing it. Just say it and I believe it. I don't have to see it. Just say it. Don't give me anything physical to prove what you said. I know where this realm works. It works in the unseen. Say what you say because I know you mean what you say and what you say you can do. Come on, man. He said great faith. I, he's, he's a one-time hearer. He went to great faith because he had what? Great assurance that what God said he can do, he can do. Come on, guys. I got more. Look at the Roman centurion. Want to see another one? Go over here. They challenged Jesus' authority in Matthew, in Matthew 21. I want you to just go to Matthew 21, 21. Faith, everybody say it. Faith is simply what I believe. Come on. Faith is simply what I believe. Come on, I can't hear you. You say that's because you ain't here. I can't hear you because you're quiet. Faith is simply what I believe. Faith is simply what I believe. Come on. Come on. Matthew 21, 21. Look at this. It's all here. Jesus answered and said, verily, verily, or verily I say unto you, if you have faith, watch this one. Watch this one. Watch this one. Underline it. I say unto you, if ye have faith 
and doubt not, and shall what? Shall not only do, which was done in this fig tree, you shall not only do what is done in this fig tree, you shall also say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not, it shall be done. All things. This is, this is how the God kind of faith works, guys. This is the same gospel account that he talks in, uh, in Mark when he says, have the God kind of faith. If you have this kind of faith and doubt not. Now, look at this. Faith. He said, if you have faith, be thou removed. Oh, my God. And shall say, look at this. And woo, this fig tree, you shall tell this thing. You shall say into the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea. Sounds like Mark 11, 23 and 24. We're going there too, right? All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Believing you shall receive. He said, faith, belief. If you got faith and belief. And when he was coming to the temple, 23, the chief priests and the elders, the people came unto him where he was teaching. They said, how you do this? Where did you get this authority? Sounds like the Roman centurion, right? Where, you, where you, this guy's got authority, man. I know authority. Watch this. And Jesus answered and said, I'll ask you one thing. You tell me this in the same wise. By what authority do you do these things? The baptism of John, whence did it come? Did it come of heaven or did it come of men? And when they reasoned in themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he shall say in us, why did you not believe him? Now, let me ask you a question. The baptism of John was salvation. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whom shall believe in him shall have everlasting life, shall not perish and have everlasting life. Do you understand? It? Believe in him. Faith and belief. Happy. Look, Mark eleven twenty three and 20. Look, look at Mark eleven twenty two through 24. Same thing. Same gospel account. I'm giving you scriptural proof. Faith is what I believe. I know. We've got to figure out where your beliefs are. But first, we've got to figure out faith is a belief. I've got to drive home one point today. Faith is simply what you believe. Faith is simply what I believe. Because then we've got to work on what you believe, where it came from, how come you're quitting on it, what are you doing, are we checking it out? We've got to get over, but we can't get over until we get under. We've got to get under this thing. Faith is what I believe. And sometimes I don't believe right. Okay, we can fix it. We're identifying Mark eleven twenty two, 22, and Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. Boom. Well, how, what is faith in God? Look at this as you go down. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say in the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Have faith in God, but shall believe. Look at 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Have the God kind of faith is the kind of faith that just believes. Now, that's a key right there, 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray. We've been there, but we ain't staying on that point today. Well, what do you mean? I'm building a bridge. Come on. Look at this one. I got more. Romans 1.16. Look at Romans 1.16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I got to give him some time. I got so much material. I got to keep cranking. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation that everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also again. He said, the g man, he's talking about the gospel of salvation. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Belief and faith. Belief and faith. How about this? Belief and faith and faith and belief. Interchangeably. Interchangeably. So write these down. I got, I got seven Seven, seven key elements here. I, think, I don't know. I got A, B, C, D. I got 100 key elements. Write this down. I'm going to go slow because I want you to get this. Faith is what you believe. It is not something beyond human knowledge that is difficult to understand. It is super simple. If you believe something, that is your faith. I'm going to say these again. I want you to write these down. I want you to grasp these things. Go back. Look it over. Do whatever you got to do. Get this. Faith is what you believe. It's not something beyond human knowledge. Now, listen, your faith for the word of God. You form faith like this at work. They told you show up, you showed up. They told you do this. You've been using faith all your life, guys. We got to get faith for the word. Faith for the word comes by hearing the Bible. Faith for life comes by hearing other things. See it? Faith comes. Faith is what you believe. It's not something beyond 
human knowledge that is difficult to understand. It is simple. If you believe something, that is your faith. Let's say A. B, faith and beliefs are synonymous. They're one and the same. This is what I truly believe. I give you enough scriptural proof. Faith and beliefs are synonymous. Faith in God and his word operates on the same principles as faith in anything else. There are no special rules. It is all a matter of what you believe. Did you get that? They all are. I'm telling you, this is powerful. Faith in God and his word operate on the same principles as faith in anything else. There are no special rules. It is all a matter of what you believe. Did you pull that in? Did you get that? Now listen, now we understand, the word of God is anointed. We need to get faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, faith for the word of God. Look, your job, faith came. If I was working on something with you and you gave me knowledge, your, my knowledge of what you gave me would transform my life. Does it make it sense? Now I want to pull this into you. And I want you to see this. C, and where did you get your beliefs? So good. C, where did you get your beliefs? Very, 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 very important. Where did you get your beliefs? C, you were not born with them. Every belief you now have was acquired, now you got to get this, as a decision you made at some point in your life. You decided to believe what you now believe. I'm going to pull that in. You were not born with them. And where did you get, C is powerful. This is powerful, man. You remember, remember they tell that story, oh, some goofy story, you know, like the mama, you know, this, this, this mom used to bake a bread, you know what I mean, and she used to make this little small, you heard this story, maybe, yeah. she had this little small loaf of bread, and she made this little small loaf of bread, and then the mom made a little small loaf of bread, and then the kid made the little small loaf of bread, and grandma did it, and great grandma, and, and, and the little girl one day said, why do we got such a small loaf of bread, like, made like this, and they thought it was some special secret thing, and, and she went to the mom, and the mother went to the grandmother, the grandmother, and they went all the way up, and she said, because I just had a small pan. And they thought there was some mystery in the bread. You know what I mean? Like, like, ooh, we made this little small little bread thing. No, it, they had a small pan. You got beliefs in you because you got small pan mentality. We, we picked these things up. You were not born with them. Every belief you now have, this is important, every belief you now have was acquired as a decision you made at some point in your life. You decided to believe what you now believe. You decided to believe what you now believe. That's very important. Okay? C. You were not born with beliefs. Every belief you now have was acquired as a decision you made at some point in your life. You decided what you believe now. D, D, very important. Pull this in. Since every belief you have came as a decision or as a result of a decision you made, every belief can also be changed by another decision. Man alive, that is life-changing. Since every belief you have came as a result of a decision you made, every belief can also be changed by another decision. That's the key. If you make a different decision, you can change your life. Did you pull that in? Another decision to change your life. Powerful. Since every belief you have came as a result of a decision you made, every belief you have can also be changed by another decision. E, E. But to make such a new decision, you need evidence. You cannot just choose to believe something without any evidence. It's true. That is so important. But to make a new decision, you need new evidence. You need evidence. You cannot choose to believe something without any evidence that it's true. You've got to say, where did I get this truth from? Where did it come from? It was like the pan. You know what I mean? Well, I thought it was something. No, it was just, it didn't come from nothing special. It just came from a, a, a way of doing things. We got to get our beliefs from the truth, from the word of God. Very very, very important. Important, important, important. Here's a big one. Ready? Concerning faith in God. The only evidence we should need is his written word because God cannot lie. When you have evidence that a previous belief was wrong, you can choose to accept that evidence as sufficient for you to believe it. This is how faith works in every area of your life. So I have to look at the areas of my life See if the evidence or a previous belief was wrong so I can choose to accept new evidence from the word of God and basically it creates my new beliefs. What you believe is the decision you make. This is powerful, guys. Just absorb these because I want you to have these things because if you don't develop these, it's going to be, it's, it's almost like 
well, if you're a rejecter of truth, we can't get nothing over to you. This is where we're at. What you believe is the decision you make. No one else can make it for you. That's important. Faith is simple. Faith is what you believe. And what you believe can be changed by a decision you make to accept evidence available to you. And that is so true. Everybody has been given evidence. Oh, my God. And that is so good. Everybody has been given evidence to show you what the Word of God is. So you can go to the Bible and decide what you believe, and then you'll have faith, for the Bible is God's Word written, and it's simple. You never have to wonder whether you have faith. You know where to find it. It comes from the Word of God, okay? Now, this is very important. So now, as I'm getting ready to wrap this thing and pull it together, say this out loud. Faith is simply what I believe, okay? Now, we've proved it to you, I think, pretty good over and over again to understand that faith is a belief just as much as faith is what? Now, think of this. Faith is what? Well, faith is a substance. No, no, no. Faith is a belief. And beliefs need, now here's the key. Beliefs need to be formed by the word of God. If your beliefs are not formed by the word of God, your flesh is going to be forming your beliefs. Pull that in. So all my life up into God, I've had what? I had basically information that we, we talked about. I had information that was given to me that I have accepted to be the truth. Where did I get my beliefs? They were, I was not born with them. Every belief you have was acquired by a decision you made. That is so good. You did that. Well, I don't think this is good or I don't think that's right. And you decided what you were going to do and not do based upon a system that you set up. When we come to the kingdom of heaven, we set up a brand new system called the word of God. Now I take my life and filter it through the word of God. The word of God now producing, get this, a new system of beliefs. So we come into life with a new system of beliefs that now have to be factored in by the word of God, which is powerful. Now watch this. This is what happens. I came in with, you know, I might not do this or I might not do that, but it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. Stop. Now we got new kingdom rules. The belief system we now have is based on the word of God. This is important. Based on the word of God, now my beliefs are supposed to be formed by this. This is my new belief system. This book. Now, guess what? It's fair and equal to everybody, and it pleases God when we follow it. So now I go, well, you know, this I used to think was okay, but my new, every decision I made formed beliefs in my life. Now I've got new beliefs to form new decisions that I make. What does that mean? That means I look at the giving aspect of the gospel, and what do I do? I form a belief. I look at the healing aspect. I form a belief. I look at the walk in love. I form a belief. If I don't allow the word of God to be my belief, I'm going to have carnality. I'm not walking in love. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. New beliefs have been formed by the word of God. And if you do not allow these new beliefs to be formed in your life, you will be governed by your flesh. And that is why we see carnality running rampant in the church sometimes. Because people don't, you don't get to take Jesus and you and mix them together. You'll be mingled. Forget it. You got to take Jesus and him only and now submit your life with his word and form new beliefs out of the word of God because faith is simply what you believe. I don't care. You can't get around it. You can't do it. I showed you time and time. I got more scriptures than that to show you time and time again. Do you believe? That's your faith. Do you have faith? That's your belief. Well, key, here's the question today. What do you believe? That's what I'm leaving you with. What do you believe and where are your beliefs formed from? We're starting off this thing. I'm going to talk to you how faith comes. I'm going to talk to you how to develop faith. I'm going to talk to you how to release faith. I'm going to talk to you how to strengthen your faith. I'm going to talk to you about weak faith. I'm going to talk to you about everything I could talk to you about faith the next 20 weeks or whatever we're going to do this. But today the question is this. Do I really have my beliefs formed from the word of God? Because my beliefs are my faith. Do you have the spirit of faith working and operating in you? Do I have the spirit of beliefs? Do I have the right spirit? Faith and beliefs are synonymous. They're together. They're one and the same. Do I have those as the firm foundation of my life? If I don't, I probably got too much of me in this thing. And what we all have to do is this. We have to form our beliefs based upon the word of God. Because remember this, guys. I'm leaving you with this. It's faith first. Until faith comes, nothing else happens in the kingdom. It's the only access point we have to God. You and I have to come by faith because faith is the way he got us back. And that's another day in itself. 
Faith is what received me. By grace, you were saved through faith. You've got to understand that. We came back to God by faith, and faith is the way now we exchange with God. Without it, he's not pleased. We cannot get access, and we have to have faith. God is not mean. God is not just leaving you in a mess. God did not leave you in bad situations. God has to have faith. Otherwise, he is bound by his word. Faith is a law. We're going to talk about it. It's going to change your life. Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you for each and every person watching right now at the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord, that faith has been stirred. I think over these next couple weeks, faith is going to be just be a, a focal point of their life to go to a whole other level. We believe it. We expect it. And we know it shall be accomplished in their life. We thank you, Lord, for your faith. We thank you, Lord, that this word is sealed in your blood and that they've received what they need to receive today to transform their life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. I'm going to see you Wednesday night. I'll see you then. God bless you. Well, praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. What a great refresher on your eyes and bow your head. I always like to give a moment uh, for people, or if you're watching online, I'd like to give a moment to, to ask you, have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Or do you need to come back to him and you want to pray and make it right with him? If that's you in this place, I'd like to give you that opportunity right now. If you want to get your life back on track with the Lord, or if you need to ask him to live in your heart, if you'll just wave your hand at me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Watching online, we pray with you. Pray along with us that this day in heaven, all of the angels will rejoice and party because another soul was brought to the kingdom. So if you guys would just all of us, let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus, I thank you for shedding your blood.